Hey guys, welcome back to Life of Mrs B. Welcome back to another sit down video. Today I am coming at you with five, one, two, three, four, five free or incredibly cheap ways to keep your kids entertained. So if you're looking for some ways to keep those kids from going a bit stir crazy, listen up for the ideas I've got for you. Idea number one is, and don't be like, Paula, that is so basic. What are you telling me that for? But idea number one is to go for a walk. Now, you, as I said, you might be like, Paula, come on, man, I know how to take my kids on a walk. What are you doing with this? But <laughs> when you go for a walk, there are so many things that you can do that maybe you don't do that much. You could do a scavenger hunt, a nature scavenger hunt. You could also, if the trees are kind of dry, you could take some paper and some crayons and do some tree rubbings. You could collect things that you find on the scavenger hunt, bring them home when you get back. You could do some paintings with what you've found. You can literally use leaves, this this is a leaf, as like, a, and this is the paper, as a stamper, like to transfer your paint. You can do cool things like that. You can find rocks and decorate rocks. When you're out, you can turn it into an educational thing. What kind of tree is this? Blah, 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 blah. What kind of bird is that that we spotted? You can turn it into more than just a walk. It's totally free. So I really like free because I like not having to spend too much money. You can also do pretty much most of those activities, rain or shine, just chuck on some waterproofs, some whaley boots and away you go. Quite often when we go to the park, even if it's not raining, but it has been raining, I'll put waterproofs on the kids so that when they're going down the slide and they're playing and they're having fun, they're not worrying about getting their clothes wet or dirty because trust me, if you've been down a slide with a puddle at the bottom and you didn't know there was a puddle at the bottom and then you get a wet bum, it's, it's not enjoyable. It doesn't make the rest of your time there fun. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to make your own Play-Doh. Now, I have a recipe here that I use. It's written down in my cookbook, but this isn't like my cookbook. That may sound like I've got a cookbook. I don't mean like that. I just mean it's like a little book that Thomas bought me and I write down it recipes in it that I like. Um, so this one, homemade Play-Doh it's called. You're gonna need one cup of plain flour, four tablespoons, not teaspoons, tablespoons of salt, 100 mils of warm water and two tablespoons of vegetable oil or sunflower oil, whatever you've got. It's so easy to make, so easy. You mix your dry ingredients in one bowl, easy enough. You mix your wet ingredients in another bowl or a jug, easy enough. You pour the wet ingredients, ingredients into the dry ingredients, mixy, mixy, mix, ta-da! And you got homemade Play-Doh. Now, if you think about it, like, well, first of all, I'm not prepared. If I was super prepared, I'd have a cup to show you. I'm talking about actual measuring cups, not just a mug. Don't, don't do that. Recipes don't turn out if you don't use things like this because it is a cup. For us British people, we don't use cups. We're like, a cup? No, tell me in grams. Um, but a cup is like an actual American measurement. So a cup is about this much. If you do this with your hands and your hands are about my size, that is about a cup. <laughs> Don't use that as a measurement, but I'm just letting you know if you think about it That's how much play-doh you're going to get like about this much play-doh So that recipe makes enough for one kid if you want to make it colored instead of just like Flower colored then what you can do is add in some liquid food color or some gel food color into your jug This is my jug and mix it through before you add it in. I have tried it many different ways and that is the easiest way now again, you might like Play-Doh Paula, that's still a basic. But making the Play-Doh in itself is an activity for kids. It keeps them busy. You've probably got flour, salt, and some sort of oil in your cupboards already. So you don't necessarily need to go out the house. It's pretty easy. Those ingredients are all relatively cheap. And then you can do things. I printed off some to show you. Obviously, you can do your kind of like basic Play-Doh things. Use cutters and get your kids to make you something, doing it that way. If you don't have any cutters at home, because maybe you've never done Play-Doh before with your kids, you can use cookie cutters. If you've got cookie cutters in your kitchen, it's absolutely fine. Use that, wash them off, put them back in your kitchen. It'll be fine. If you've got any rolling pins, you can use that. Plastic plates, plastic forks. Well, you can use regular forks, but like things like that. My kids like to play Master Chef <laughs> with Play-Doh, which sounds a bit like, I don't know, 
like posh but it's not posh but what they do is I'm the judge and the kids are the contestants on MasterChef and they create me something from Play-Doh they put it on a plastic plate and I taste it and I pick a winner or who's moving on to the next round blah 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 usually they all move on in the next round because they don't like not moving on in the next round so they usually all move on and it's just a fun way to get their imagination going it's really good for muscles in your hands to use play-doh it works on your what's that one fine motor skills <laughs> i had to think about it there fine motor skills if you're like making little things and rolling little balls that works on all that but you can also do this which is to print off some play-doh mats now ideally what you would do once you've printed this off you can get all these online they are really really good they are free just type in free printable play-doh mats and you'll get like a whole list or there was one and it had a hundred different play-doh mats on it so go and check that out i'm not going to give you any links just type it in at google <laughs> and what you would do is you would print it out so this is just paper and then you take this and you laminate it now as I said, like, I home educate my kids. I think it's like the unofficial rule of being a home educator or a homeschooler. You gotta have a laminator, a printer and a laminator and you are sorted. You don't need anything else. Pens, yeah. Pencils, yeah. Computer, yeah. Just a laminator and a printer. But if you don't have a laminator and you can't laminate this, stick it in a poly pocket if you've got one of them. If you're across the pond, I believe you don't call it a poly pocket, you call it a sheet protector or a page protector same thing <laughs> but shove it in one of them you can tape up the end so it doesn't like fall out or whatever if your kids are going to be like Woo! Um, and then what you do is you take these and they can create stuff onto it and it's going onto the plastic so it's not going to stick to the paper it's not going to ruin the paper so for instance in this one they could give it a face hair eyes clothes whatever you want then i also found this one online these ones are cupcakes so you can decorate your cupcakes again if you're making like little sprinkles to put on this it's going to be really good for kids fine motor skills it's going to be fun it's going to take up a lot of time but you can get all different ones you can get scenes so like a winter scene and the kids can like make snowmen and all that kind of thing so many different ones whatever you're looking for spring summer winter fall autumn whatever you want to call it christmas hanukkah like the internet has it all idea number three is afternoon poetry tea time session my kids love this they love it it might sound like a bit fancy or whatever but it's not i don't usually do it in the like afternoon like afternoon tea time i usually do it for lunch time so the idea behind this is you have afternoon tea but we have it for lunch and you read some poetry to your kids that's it so the kind of things i like to make are some scones sandwiches veggie sticks you could do some fruit make some cookies so that in itself is really good because that could take up your time with the kids in the morning do some baking with them like cookies you know you need to like leave cookies for an hour in the freezer before you cook them and all that jazz so that could definitely definitely take up some time and again you can make that educational you know because you can get kids to read a recipe that's working on their literacy skills their math okay oh we need this plus this how much is that it's pretty it's pretty good like how you can encompass education and a lot of different things but we do that we sit down at the dining table we have lunch and i read some poetry i don't have um these these bookcases are pretty tall right but i don't have any books on children's poetry i probably should get some but i normally just go online on my phone and type in poetry for kids online and that's it so i read to them poetry i have also read like books in the past to them just kids books this is me pointing at um the lion the witch and the wardrobe because that's the last book that we read and we read it last friday over poetry tea time <laughs> but you can do that you can do poems whatever you feel like and it's just a good way to get your kids to sit down they'll enjoy it it's kind of novel if they're not used to having like scones and jam and all that kind of thing it's fun and it's food so you know food always goes down well in our house now quite often don't know about your kids but my kids don't particularly enjoy poetry so but poetry is really good for them so it's a good way to get them to sit down because they're eating they're occupied they're busy their hands are moving they're not fidgeting because they're eating and they can listen whilst they eat so my kids really enjoy that and it doesn't cost that much money like 
because you remember you're already going to make sandwiches for lunch. Scones are pretty cheap to make, you just need like flour, butter, some milk, that's it. We use vegan butter and milk, works well, and cookies, they're not that expensive either. So that is idea number three. Idea number four. I really, really like this one. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, I shared this the other day, and it is to give each kid one piece of paper, one pair of scissors, and one glue stick each. You can also add in like pens or crayons or whatever if you'd like to do that as well. Then set them a challenge, say, okay, here you go, you each have this, this, and this. I want you to create something. What can you create? I find that the kids work, like my kids particularly, work really well together on that. So they kind of feed off each other and see what the other person's creating. If you've only got one kid, you might want to do it with them, which that could be fun. Now, when we did this the other day, my kids created, Sky did a, uh, you know, like paper dollies? Do you know what paper dollies are? You know, and like you fold the paper like an accordion, you cut out your thing and then you open it up and then it's a wee roll of paper dollies. She did that, but instead of paper dollies, she did Easter eggs and then she cut out a design on it. It was really cool. And then when she opened it up, it was like Easter egg bunting. It was so cute. Oban, he made a squid. So <laughs> he cut out like a, a body and then he cut out like, what are those things called? Are they tentacles? Maybe they're tentacles. Um, he cut out the tentacles and he coloured it in and he gave it a face. It was really cute. Or Gail, he cut his paper into four and he made four tickets, one for me and then each of the kids. He made a ticket for um, the Hogwarts Express. So he did a little train on it and he wrote platform nine and three quarters. He tried to write that. He's not, um, he didn't really know what the fraction was. He's like, I know it's got a nine, a three and a four. <laughs> so he wrote down those numbers and he did do it as a fraction, but not the fraction he was looking for. And it was just really fun. It kept them busy. I don't know about you, but I've always got crafty stuff kicking about. So it was pretty easy to do. I've got multiple pairs of scissors. If you've got more than one kid, that is a top tip. You need more than one pair of kids' scissors, for sure, for sure. So that was tip number four. Sorry if it's a bit dark, but I say this all the time when I do my sit down videos. I'm not a fancy YouTuber, so I don't have like a ring light or anything or a box light. I should probably get one, but here we are. And I have a sit down video and I don't have one, but tip number five. I like this one. This one is a real, well I like them all, but I really like this one. And it is to have a birthday party for a teddy bear. Mm, you might be like, Paula, that's kind of weird. Teddy bears don't have birthdays. So the idea behind this is, it is your teddy bear's birthday. Pick a, to a, a toddy, pick a teddy or a soft toy from your kid's collection. I'm sure if they're like my kids, they have soft toys coming out of their ears. Honestly, my kids have got so many soft toys. So pick one. And that soft toy is gonna have its birthday today. How amazing! So what we like to do for this is set up a birthday party in your house. So we make bunting, or you can buy bunting if you've got bunting at home, hang it up. If you've got balloons or buy some balloons, blow them up. You can have a little bit of party food when it's our kids, like my actual kids, not my teddy kids. When it's their birthday, we do like a kind of like a little party in the house for them on their birthday and it's always like a little buffet. We have things like pizza, chicken nuggets, sandwiches, some fruit, breadsticks. They really like um, little, this is meant to be a satsuma, but like a satsuma or a clementine or whatever you've got going. Peel them, separate them out into the segments, then dip the segments in some melted chocolate. So only half the segment, so you're holding it, right? Dip it in melted chocolate, put it on a cookie sheet, sprinkle some desiccated coconut on it, put it in the fridge, let it set, and it is so, so good. So we have the party food, you can play past the parcel, just wrap up. Maybe you've got time to like, get a little thing to wrap up for that. If not, just wrap up something that's already in your house and let the teddy win, the teddy can join in, play musical statues, all that kind of thing. It's so exciting. Make sure you make a cake or buy a cake, sing happy birthday at the teddy bear. It's a bit silly, but it's fun. Kids enjoy it. Kids love birthday parties. Who doesn't love birthday parties? So your kids will enjoy that one for sure. So that is my five cheap or free ideas that you could do with your kids to keep them entertained. I didn't include things like going swimming, because you're maybe not going to be going swimming if you're not going out that much. Um, 
building dens, having a movie night, all that kind of thing. Going to the library, spending time reading. I didn't really include them, but there's loads and loads of ideas, guys. If comments are on, leave a comment. Let me know your best way to keep your kids entertained. Cheap or very, no, free or very cheap. And if comments aren't on, you can pop over to Instagram, talk to me there. You can also pop over to the community tab that's here on YouTube and leave me a comment there as well, guys. So I will see you later. If you're not subscribed, do subscribe and I'll catch you on my next one. New videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, guys. Bye.